Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to 1974, a Soviet Union championship played in Leningrad. And Leningrad was the city in Soviet Union, which now is known as St. Petersburg and of course before. So if you want to find it on the map, just, you know, go to the actual Russian map and then find St. Petersburg. And this game was played in the third round of the tournament and as white we have Rafael Vaganian, Armenian Grandmaster. He got the Grandmaster when he was 19 years old, so very talented um, young guy. However, in 1974, he's already 23 years old. And his ranking um, by chess metrics is about 2690. So he's extremely strong. He was considered to be in top 50 at that time, but 10 years later, in 1985, he was considered to be top 5 in the world, maybe even top 3, just um, behind Kasparov and Karpov. Uh, so, a really talented and strong player. And he, about his play style, he doesn't actually calculate all the variations very precisely. He plays very intuitive and attractive chess. So uh, it's really uh, great to see one of his uh, best games. And as his opponent, Belarusian Grandmaster, who was not Grandmaster yet at that time, uh, he was just International Master, Viktor Kuprejcik, and his ranking at that time is considered to be 2613. So warm welcome for both of the players and let's see what happened on the board. Vaganian open with d4. We have knight f6 by Kuprejcik and bishop on g5 attacking the knight. The most popular uh, variation would be a uh, knight on e4 with attack on the bishop. Uh, however, it's very flexible here. So e6 is possible, d5 is possible, c5 is possible, g6 is possible and, and other less popular um, ways of opening. Uh, c5 was chosen by Kuprejcik and here uh, white usually takes this um, this knight and after uh, g takes on f6 uh, black would have the compensation for this um, double pawns on f file uh, because they're gonna have the massive center and um, uh, probably very interesting game here and uh, here d5 was played by Vaganian and queen on b6 uh, pretty standard stuff and now we have knight on c3 uh, of course bishop on c1 can be played and uh, queen on c1 also can be played knight on c3 is the most popular answer and actually we have now trompovsky attack and the variation is called poisoned pawn variation and this pawn is actually poisoned uh, but can it be taken or or, or not Actually, it's quite popular line, uh, believe me or not, but this pawn can be taken and there are hundreds of the games in database and some of them are, you know, even won by, um, uh, by black. Uh, so bishop on d2 defending the, the knight. Uh, and now if black plays something, you know, like g6, uh, trying to develop rook b1 would be played, queen a3. And now you can remember that pattern. Now knight can go on b5, uh, so attacking the queen, but also, uh, you know, attacking the, the, the king and the and the rook with the fork. So uh, after, you know, uh, taking the rook, white would just stand much better. So that's not the option. Queen on b6 is usually played in this position. So black got the, the pawn, but they lost also two tempi. So a pretty dangerous situation, especially after e4, very active move. d6, pretty standard, and now we have f4. And um, the most popular here e6 or e5 could be played. So for example, if we have e6, rook b1 could be played. And after uh, queen moving to uh, d8, bishop on b5, bishop d7. And then black would have to play with this position. Um, so so that, that's the choice if it's comfortable because uh, position of... Uh, black king wouldn't be so so great it's similar somehow to some variation of sicilian uh, with c5 and 
and the pawns on e4 and f4 but not uh, not not really there are no pawns on on and d2 uh, so slightly different but um, but very similar uh, also as i said e5 could be played uh, maybe more solid for for black but after um, taking on e5 uh, white would have this pass pawn and it's actually protected pass pawn however e4 pawn is not easy to defend so it's still a lot of game to play and after knight of f3 and knight on d7 that um, that would be the the, the game the more popular variations however we have g6 and g6 is not really recommended it gives white a lot of possibilities attacking possibilities uh, but actually interesting fact that in 2004 uh, nigel short play this against magnus carlsen and magnus carlsen had a great attacking game at that time uh, but at the end he lost so Nigel Scholl defended really fiercely really great very good defense Magnus Carlsen was was known of the very attacking style at that time um, but he was 14 years old at that time so Nigel Short had much more experience uh, and he managed to to win and survive all these fierce attacks uh, uh, but let's back to the to the game. So uh, Vaganian play e5. So attacking in the center, we have d takes on e5 and f takes on e5. So uh, knight has to move somewhere. So going to d7. And here we have knight f3. So um, developing another piece. Uh, bishop g7. So attacking twice the pieces in the center. Uh, so as you see, if the if the pawns are so advanced it's not easy um, to defend them and that's also the case this is why white don't care about this they just uh, you know want to push but first have to be this this push has to be prepared so rook on b1 and now this queen actually doesn't have much um, squares to go uh, this of course is scary because of this bishop and also this would be scary because of the knight uh, so queen d8 was played and here we have e6 of course bishop f4 was possible uh, but it's not the idea to defend the pieces in the center when white can have so much initiative so e6, e6 was played and look at this now f takes on e6 and now white don't take um, on e6 they go knight on g5 look at this so this knight actually threatening now um, the fork and you know winning the the, the minor piece this um, this bishop is in troubles so black actually play um, knight back to f6 so now we have defense um, on e6 um, pawn however bishop on b5 and is check uh, and here of course uh, bishop on um, d7 everybody would like to play bishop on d7 or at least a knight on um, d7 the problem is this is the problem this still the threat is still exists here so it's impossible king has to be moved to f8 and here we have d takes on e6 uh, and believe me or not but the the most interesting move recommended by the engine actually is bishop on h6 so making a space for this king uh, and the variation could go as follows so let's just feel uh, what this situation is about so um, castle by white could be played king g7 going to the safety and now bishop on d7 it looks like really crazy move it's like does nothing however after bishop on d7 we don't take we just play rook takes on f6 uh, and look at this position now uh, e takes on f6 now we have knight on f7 forking the queen and the rook uh, so queen has to move somewhere on e7 let's stay close to the defense but now we would have um, uh, bishop on h6 with check uh, king g8 the only move 
knight d5 attacking the queen and also if the queen is moved somewhere then we would have checkmate so queen has to take on e6 and now knight on d8 i really like this line uh, but th this line let you feel the position look at this so this bishop actually controlling the the squares and this knight also control the squares so this king is totally trapped here so now just you know find the way how to checkmate um queen on e5 has to be played because queen is under attack and now queen f3 so still checkmating ideas or black would have to sacrifice um, the queen so uh, the only move bishop on f5 and now queen on b3 the threat is knight on e7 with double check and mate so uh, that's pretty serious threat and nothing can stop it so c4 and even if bishop go on e6 then checkmate can be done also from e7 so uh, look at this this is all covered by uh, white pieces so that would be very beautiful checkmate so even the the line recommended by the engine doesn't really work in the you know human terms uh, black would have to sacrifice the the queen for the defense um, but here of course uh, kuprejcik didn't play that he played a6 more active and trying to kick the the bishop and here Vaganian could go with bishop on d3 and have the active gameplay but he go with bishop on e3 uh, so threatening to take uh, you know the queen for free of course inviting the um, exchanging the queens uh, however after exchanging uh, black it's not really stand much better so uh, the bishop can't be taken because rook on d8 and after knight on e8 um, then first uh, check and after uh, bishop on f6 white would just take um, the bishop on c8 and now this rook can be moved because um, there is the knight hanging the knight can be moved because it's the rook hanging and also the bishop can be moved and the knight can be moved so really really uh, paralyzed um, pieces of black not really great idea and black even can play anything like you know rook on a3 trying to attack the the white pieces uh, because actually we would have rook on f6 and after taking um, then the rook also could be taken uh, you know by white so uh, really a bad idea uh, bishop on h6 um, similar idea like before uh, but after rook on d8 king g7 there is a space now with the with the bishop on h6 uh, but now actually it also doesn't work um, exchanging the rooks and here we would have knight on f7 with check and of course um, white winning the piece so king g8 and white takes the, the the piece and after king on g7 actually white are up the piece and of course uh, winning the game very easily uh, so it's not the option to exchange the queens this is why Kuprejcik decided to play queen on a5 so now look at this uh, the pawn attacks the the bishop um, on b5 and also there is the queen which attacks the the knight on c3 so two pieces are hanging and now tell me uh, what would you do in this position if you if you you know um, attack uh, as white so feel free to pause the video and think about this position this is a really really a uh, great idea uh, of white while i enjoy my cup of tea okay are you ready so the move we are looking for any other move is just you know uh the, the situation would be equal and black would just manage to 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 get even better if you if you play wrong move there is only one good move in this position and it's castle so if you find castle then congratulations uh you have a high attacking skills uh so that was played by vaganian 
Uh, and here, queen on c3, of course, can't be uh, played because we have checkmate here, as this knight now is pinned, so that's impossible to defend. And also, if the bishop on b5 is taken, it also doesn't work because we would have rook on b5 with check, queen c7, as the queen has to stay here, otherwise uh, it's checkmate, of course. So queen c7, knight d5, now attacking the queen, so queen has to move, uh, maybe queen e5, uh, bishop c5, now with attack on the uh, e7 pawn, so black could defend. Uh, anyway, bishop on e7 with attack, knight on e7, and now white don't need to take on e7, can play knight on f6, and now the queen is under attack, and, and black has to do something about that, so sacrifice the queen, uh, for some two pieces or maybe move the queen on e3 and after king h1 bishop f6 rook takes on f6 with check king e8 and now knight f7 attacking the rook uh, but actually with other much more powerful threats so bishop could takes on e6 so don't care about that, that rook there is no time to take that rook actually but now it's still not enough knight on d6 check and look this king actually has no uh, way to go if it go to the uh, it's impossible to go on the f file uh, and if it's coming here then we would have you know check discovered check and after king on c8 just take the uh, queen on e3 so um that's the problem uh, uh in this position so it can be played it can be taken uh, it's really really a uh, difficult position so uh what kuprejcik found here is h6 and now look at this position now we have one hanging piece second hanging piece and third hanging piece so three pieces are hanging and now feel free to pause the video for one more time and find the best uh, idea for uh, for white how to win this game uh, why i enjoy my cup of tea <sighs> okay are you ready so actually here there is more ways to win of course moving this uh, this knight just simply wins so uh, if you found any of of the moves like moving this knight is okay however queen d3 is so powerful look at this so vaganian don't care about these two pieces hanging uh, okay he protected um, the knight but it doesn't matter in this position and actually we know already what will happen if the bishop is taken how about if black takes the knight now everything looks like pretty okay uh but it's only look like watch at this queen on g6 uh and here king g8 otherwise is a checkmate queen f7 anyway and now king on h7 but now this bishop can move with check and there is no way to stop the checkmate so uh, this is checkmate on g6 very simple and so uh, actually it's impossible to touch any of these hanging pieces this is madness on the board you know this was what white doing here is the madness king g8 was played now we have queen on g6 anyway and bishop on e6 so black now you know get rid out of this um uh, this pawn that was the really big pain for 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 black and now black can start to play uh, we have knight on e6, so um, taking this um, bishop, and here we have rook on h7, because of course there is a threat of checkmate. So rook on h7 is forced, and here we have rook on f6, another crushing move. There are a lot of um, ways to win now, but rook on f6 is so fancy. And now what's the threat here? rook on f8 is is of course checkmate so um and and another move in e takes on f6 also doesn't work because there would be checkmate on f8 so it also doesn't work so the only move defending would be knight on d7 now defending um the square on f8 
but here we have bishop on d7. It's not the best way to, to win. It's not the brightest and the most effective way, but it's the simplest way, I think. So after bishop on d7, actually, um, Victor Kuprejcik resigned the game. So what a wonderful game. And now I would like to point one more thing. Look at white. They had three hanging pieces and black didn't have even time to take any of these pieces. And look at this. White actually didn't lose a single piece. They lost only this four pawns and that's all. So this is quite, you know, this is madness on the board. And now um, black, what black can do here? Actually, totally nothing. Queen can take on c3, so uh, getting back some material, but it's uh, but it's not en enough. White now can just choose they want to uh, win a fancy way or maybe just more prosaic way. So fancy way would be rook on f8. It's slightly more calculation, but no, not really. Rook takes on f8 and now knight on f8. Um, and now we have the threat with checkmating ideas here and checkmate will, will, will follow on f7 or h7. Uh, so queen on e3 first, uh, king h1 and here nothing more can be done. Queen e5 maybe, defending the, bringing the defender to g7 um, bishop, but still not enough. Bishop on e6, the same idea. If the king is moved, there is actually checkmate. Here would be a checkmate and here also would be checkmate. Uh, so the only way would be, you know, taking on e6, knight e6 and actually after b5, queen e8, we would have checkmate on f8. So that would be the more effective way, um, but, but actually it's not necessary. Even the most prosaic way would be enough. So uh, for example, rook on f7. And after taking the bishop uh, and moving to e5, white actually could just force exchanging all the pieces, which is totally enough because white would have extra minor piece and of course easy victory. So this was a really incredible game. I really enjoyed that and so brave with so many hanging pieces and and still they couldn't be taken and they were not taken even single piece until the end so uh if you like this video just press like and if you don't like press unlike and leave the comments how do you like the games like this um i have more uh, to show of course and if you want to see them all then consider to subscribe so thanks for watching and see you in the next one